Army interrogators have just taken over this building for the interrogation of prisoners and suspects. Following an initial contact with S2, a villager has been brought here to be interviewed. He is Gerardo Legoto, police chief. This man deserved to die. He was no good. A liar, a cheat. Oh, sure. He was the village chief. <laughs> but did he care for his people? Bah. He took from their mouths, from the tables to give to the guerrillas. Goats, sheep, rice. Medical supplies, money. How did he get shot? Guerrillas, or maybe an American bullet. Who knows? Shall we say a battle casualty? Well, how did you survive as police chief? I? Every day I was threatened. But these people are good. The whole village. They can be trusted. Well, I appreciate your cooperation, but uh, why are you telling me all this? When I was a little boy, I almost lost my leg. But an American missionary doctor saved it. I have never forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Legoto. What you've told us is very interesting and most helpful. Please. If there is anything I can do for you, just say the word. He got to limbs, but he sees and hears well. Can we afford to ignore Legoto? The answer obviously is no. In this kind of war, there is no telling who in a village is a guerrilla or a guerrilla sympathizer. Legoto may prove valuable in providing vital information. At this moment, however, prisoners are our chief concern, for what information they may provide could very well affect our whole tactical situation. A call from S2. Box 2 Alpha. Be you, sir, Box 2. Boxer 2, this is Boxer 2 Alpha. They're in the courtyard, sir. Anytime you say, sir. 
Yes, sir, I'll be right over. By capturing Dulaca, we've driven a wedge into the base of the peninsula. But guerrilla forces still occupy Rancom and Lorat. Now, until we can neutralize those villages, we've got troubles. And one thing's for certain, we're in no position to attack, at least not until reinforcements arrive, and that'll take six hours. Now, in that time, several things could happen. Guerrillas could move in on us from either Lorat or Rancom, or they could put the squeeze on us from both villages. I've just returned from a staff meeting. S2, fresh from a meeting with the CO and his staff, briefs the interrogation team leader so that he and his men can base their interrogations on the latest tactical intelligence requirements. On the other hand, they might counterattack from the north, drawing upon forces from either Lorat or Rancon or both. Like I said, no reinforcements for six hours. So what do we do? Spread our forces around and we're vulnerable. The only alternative is to concentrate what we have at the right place. Jack, that's where you come in. Those PWs you have may give us the right answers. Principally, where the attack will come from and at what strength. Also find out about the movement of units or groups of guerrillas into assembly areas. Try and locate mortar positions or movement of positions. Information on any patrols operating near us, especially reconnaissance patrols. Try and locate supply points. Well, I guess that's all about now. But remember, time is a big factor. Yes, sir. We'll do our best. For future reference, here's a copy of the map overlay. Oh, by the way, I spoke with that police chief. Legoto. Yeah, he seemed mighty anxious to cooperate. What did you get? Nothing much. He said that the village chief worked with the guerrillas and that the villagers really hated him. Well, that contradicts what we've learned, that most people liked him. Interrogations start with a thorough examination of personal effects, the contents of a wallet, a diary, or a map. From them can come valuable grains of truth, and, as often happens, a prisoner can stub his toe hard on the smallest bit of truth. What largely determines the selection of the interrogation technique to be used is the subject himself, his temperament, mood, background, age, Take this group. This man is a picture of fear. This one, defiance. This one is sullen. This man, an officer, shows arrogance. This one is depressed, a picture of gloom. The egotist, self-styled mental giant. To an experienced interrogator, these characteristics, aspects of human behavior, can prove tremendously important. These characteristics are carefully noted, studied, and remembered to be used as tools in persuading prisoners and suspects to cooperate and reveal information. As part of preliminary planning, the interrogator team has already coordinated with other sections. Order of battle has provided all available information on the insurgents in the area of operations. There is also the blacklist from counterintelligence, giving the names of persons wanted by the authorities for involvement or possible involvement in the insurgency. Additional aids include aerial photographs and maps of the area of operations and the interrogator's guide, a reference book to help formulate particular questions during an interrogation.
And now, a close study of the personal effects removed from the prisoners by the guards. So that letter belongs to the private. He tried to hide it inside his shirt. A pretty nervous guy, just a kid. Where was he found? At a fork in the road about half mile outside the village. Show me. Uh, here it is, this road here. At the park itself? Yes, sir. Who had this? The lieutenant. What's the matter? Oh, he's a cold fish, sir. Arrogant? Yes, sir, I guess that's it. How did it get torn? I don't know, sir, that's the way we found it on him. These demolition items, aren't they? Yes, sir. They belong to the sergeant. This wallet, too. A real humdinger, that sergeant. Real tough. At least he likes to give that impression. Uh, sir, this Preliminary planning. The entire team of interrogators must familiarize itself with the smallest detail prior to the interrogations. And now, the interrogations get underway. And the first subject is the young, frightened prisoner. Is it just chance that this man is the first one to be interrogated? No, the choice is deliberate. For experience has taught us that an emotionally disturbed man might be more inclined to talk than others, thus providing military information that can be used in interrogating more obstinate subjects. Every approach technique used in an interrogation calls for an appraisal of the prisoner's mood or temperament, thus, because of this prisoner's emotional condition, it is determined by the interrogator that little or no resistance will be offered. Therefore, he selects the direct approach. That is, no attempt will be made to conceal the purpose of the interrogation, the direct approach. Can you read a map? Yes, sir. Where are you at this moment, on the map? Show me. Show me where you were born. Here. In this fishing village. Capayas. Like fishing? Yeah. My father is a fisherman. I like fishing too, trout fishing. What do you catch there on the Gulf Coast? Swordfish. Barracuda. Did you work with your father? My father. And my brother. Then your brother likes fishing too. No. Not much. I don't know anything. Please. I have no information. What are you worried about? There's no need to be frightened. I only want to know a little about you and about your unit. Now then, just where were you supposed to join your unit? I don't know. Of course you know, you're smart. You can read a map. Here's where you were picked up. At this fork in the road, correct? In which direction were you going? What fork? What branch in the road were you going to take? Seems to me you've got a good sense of direction. Here on the map, show me. Show me. The right, are you sure? Yes, sir. To Larat? No, sir. Larat is to the west, the left fork, and I was going to go north. Why? I was told to go in this direction. But wasn't it safer to go to Larat, where you would be well taken care of? The direct approach has achieved its purpose. The subject has begun to provide desired information. This is known as the breaking point. Now for the questioning phase. The letter taken from the subject by the guard. An old letter, apparently kept by the prisoner the way one keeps a cherished photograph. It has a disturbing effect, a reaction that does not elude the interrogator.
Dear Brother Tito, no matter what happens, fighting for the People's Liberation Army is your patriotic duty. It is not like fishing. Let our father be the fisherman like his father before him. But this, this is not for us. I expect big things from you. That's why I'm glad you're with the 32nd Infantry Battalion. It's a great unit. Captain Salazar is a hard man, but he'll make a good soldier out of you. Do a good job, and I'll see to it that you are properly rewarded. Admire your brother, don't you? I had an older brother in the Army. He was killed. Admired him very much. Lots of courage. You like Captain Salazar? No. I mean... Don't worry. No one will know about the letter. Neither your brother nor Captain Salazar. Where's Salazar now? I don't know. Where's the 32nd Infantry Battalion? Show me on the map. I do not know. Were you ordered to go north? Yes, sir. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. Is that where the 32nd Infantry Battalion went? I, I do not know. Show me again which fork in the road you were going to take. And that's where you were ordered to go? Yes, sir. But the 32nd was to go east. No, not. I mean, I do not know. I do not know. I do not know. By repeating questions, a good technique, the interrogator causes the subject to blunder into the truth, bearing out the maxim that it is easier to remember a truth than a lie. And now, the termination phase, that part of every interrogation that must leave the door open for further questioning, ending, if possible, on a friendly note. That'll be all for now. You've been very cooperative. If you think of anything else or find that what you've told me is not correct, or you want to correct any of your statements, just notify the guard. He'll get in touch with me and you and I can have another talk. Okay? Yes, sir. Following the interrogation, a team conference is held to discuss the results of the questioning. Although pertinent information has already been disseminated, here at this conference, the information is used in laying the groundwork for further interrogations. Sit down. I said sit down. This is for administrative purposes, so give me quick answers. What's your unit? Is there anything wrong with your ears? I asked, what is your unit? All I have to give you is my name, Frank, service number and date of birth. Oh, you know the rules of the Geneva Convention, do you? I never heard of any of you giving that kind of consideration to captured U.S. soldiers. Let's have the wallet. Hmm? Are you deaf or something? I asked, let's have the wallet. There's only one way to treat guys like you. Bob, stop it! What's the matter with you? Have you lost your mind? This man's a prisoner of war. He's to be treated according to the Geneva Conventions. Geneva Conventions. Break a few heads. You know our policy. No violence. What caused the rumpus? He stole the wallet off the table. Who does it belong to? 
It is mine, sir. It was taken away from me by the guard. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Get out. I'm taking over. Guard, let me have some coffee. You like coffee? Yes, yes, sir. Make it two. The threat and rescue technique of interrogation, commonly known as the Mott and Jet. By belittling the first interrogator, the second interrogator can create a bond between himself and the prisoner. The object is to make the prisoner feel so grateful that he will cooperate rather than be subjected to harsh treatment. It calls for careful handling, subtlety. That other fellow never knew how to treat anybody decently. Sure, break a few heads. Now then, let's forget about all that. This report, I don't have much time, so let's get it over with. You must know every inch of this country. How'd you manage to get captured? I could not help it. I guess not, with guns breathing down your neck. Say, wait a minute. You're the demolition expert. That's why you were captured near the bridge. Now, this one, just south of the village. We found it primed and ready to be blown up. Keep us from crossing it. Actually, we didn't need the bridge since we came by chopper. You did a good job, though. Where'd you learn about demolition? They told me. They? The 36. Relax. I know all about the 32nd Infantry Battalion, Captain Salazar's unit. You know Captain Salazar? Who doesn't? Life to him is cheap. That's why you were left behind. So easy for Salazar to say, you stay behind and blow up the bridge. Stay behind and get killed while I escape to the north. Suppose you were set free. Would you go back to Salazar? I would fight for the People's Liberation Army. That isn't what I asked you. I said, would you go back to Salazar after having failed in your mission? Captain Salazar did not want me to die. Uh, Again, the prisoner begins to show his unwillingness to cooperate. To neutralize this opposition, the interrogator must be ready to change his technique. More of what I can. Excuse me, sir. I can see I'm wasting my time. I've got more important things to do. I'll send the other man in, perhaps. No, no. no. Uh, I will tell you what I know. About Salazar? I know all about him. About the 32nd? The fact that your unit was going north? I know that, too. But I'm sure the other man has questions. Not only the 32nd. There are others. What others? 26th Infantry Battalion. Uh, uh, I am tired. Go on, go on. The 26th, what are the others? Uh, I know only about the 26th. Uh, half the battalion has uh, left Larat. Uh, they had orders to go north a few days ago. Uh, I learned this from a friend uh, who had been in Larat. A suspect has been picked up at a checkpoint. Sergeant! Why has this man been picked up? What has he done? Armed with a rifle. Does that mean he's been helping the guerrillas? I don't know that, sir. As I said... Civilians are my responsibility. I will take care of this man. If he has done anything wrong, I will see to it he is properly punished. You better tell that to the interrogation officer, sir. But this is understood. I am the police chief. 
Sorry, sir. I have my orders. As with soldier prisoners, a report is made concerning the suspect's detention. Check Mauser. U.S. Filter for sending signals. Wonder where he got this. I don't know, sir. We found both the flashlight and the rifle under a pile of hay in his wagon. Oh, sir, that police chief. The Goto? Yes, sir. Says he has authority over civilians and wanted to take the farmer into custody. And you refused, of course. Yes, sir. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. No, no, no. I told you I found them in the field, the wheat field. You said so, behind your house. I yes. Where'd you find the flashlight? In the field. The rifle? In the field, too. Both of them. A Czech rifle and an American-made flashlight. Together? Together, yes. I can see where you might have found the rifle in the field, but the flashlight... Maybe you found it elsewhere. No, no, like I said, in... in or was it the flashlight in the field and the rifle elsewhere? No, no, in the field, both of them, both. I told you a few times that I found... The, the monotony the or repetition technique, causing such exasperation that the suspect may be willing to cooperate. Think about that for a while. Which is it? The flashlight in the field or the rifle at the side of the road? Both. Both. Both what? Both on the road? The flashlight. I mean, you, you mix everything. Who did you say it belonged to? The flashlight? Somebody, I don't know. Or did you steal it? The flashlight, not the rifle. No, 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 I don't steal. A flashlight is very good for sending signals at night, is it not? I have lived here all my life. I am a good man. But they forced me to send signals. All of this start... With interrogation people. techniques properly applied, grains of truth begin to sift into a pattern of potentially vital information. But there is still a long road ahead.